Good morning, everybody. Hopefully having a wonderful uh, start to the week. Uh, just kind of a heads up, I am on vacation in Palm Springs looking at the mountains and the palm trees. So I do not have the same uh, Wi-Fi or uh, internet connection that I normally have. So hopefully this will go off smoothly, but I hope you forgive me if it does not. So also that's the reason we're going to have a much shorter call than we normally have so I can get back on vacation. So here we go. Uh, five, uh, five Q take breakdown. Last week, remember, guys, I told you, please, 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 this only takes about 10 minutes to do every other week. This is a great way to get a little bit better at everything you do. If you don't know how to get access to this or or um, what this is all about, please schedule a time to talk, and I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. So here we go. Come on, you. Oops. Come on, you. You can tell. There we go. World stop talk Top stock strategist says investors are falling into a trap again. So let me get out of here. In late 2021, three consecutive years of double digit returns by the SP 500 Wall Street strategists were sure the stock market would continue to soar in 2022. But Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley's chief investment officer, chief U.S. equity strategist, wasn't so optimistic. Wilson argued that the combination of the fire and ice of rising interest rates and fading economic growth would hurt stock prices and lead to challenging years for investors. Every time the stock market rallied through the year, Wilson warned that it was nothing but a trap, and he turned out to be right. The S&P 500 ended up shrinking 20% in 2022, finishing the year at 38.39, far from Wall Street's 4,800 average forecast. Guys, okay, so what does that tell you? Look at uh, so anytime Wall Street's telling you the market's going to go up, should you feel that that's comfortable that that's going to that's what's going to happen? Now, with recent U.S. economic data increasing the hopes for a soft landing, and guys, is that true? Do we hear? more and more and more that we're going to get a soft landing. I mean, we had a huge jobs report, a positive jobs report here the last time, but that's, and we think that's good because the economy is going to go great, but what's that talk about what's going to happen with Fed rates? So, and when was the last time we've ever had a soft landing? Never. The strategist says uh, investors are repeating the same old mistake. The S&P 500 jumped 5% year to date amid the fading inflation recession fears. Wilson believes that corporate earnings are still set to take a hit, making the rise uh, just another bear market rally. The final stages of the bear market are always the trickiest, and we uh, have to be on high alert. Guys, why is the last stages of the bear market always the trickiest? Why is the last stages of the bear market always the trickiest? You have to open this up. Why is that the trickiest? Because every time we hit a bottom, everybody thinks, or every time we hit a, a dip, people think what? That's the bottom. Every time we hit a, a dip, people think that's the bottom. So do we ever know, when do we know when the bottom is? When do we know when the bottom of a bear market is? About two years after the bear market is done, that's when we know when the bottom is. So uh, earnings estimate for SP500 2023 is 228. But even with the recession, Morgan Stanley expects earnings rates to be 195. Guys, if, if um, the consensus is 228 and the actual is 195, again, he's just as much a, I mean, this guy is predicting just like, if we don't believe uh, the earnings estimate of the average, we shouldn't predict, uh, uh, believe him anymore, except that he has been right more than the average. Uh, Wilson said on Sunday that the evidence is mounting that corporations' costs are growing faster than their sales. So guys, if job growth is going up, what's one of the largest costs for corporations? Employees and raise and uh, their their salaries and such. So uh, he believes that we're going to see a profit the road because of this. He said there's an increasingly eyeing a bear case of 180. So he was at 185. Now he's saying 180 per share in earnings for the SP 500. So he hasn't gotten more positive. He's gotten what? More negative. Our work shows further erosion in earnings with the gap between our model and the forward uh, estimates as wide as it's ever been. The last two times our model has been this far below consensus, the S&P 500 fell 34 to 49%. So is it all roses and lollipops, guys? Wilson, who earned the number one stock strategist honors in the latest institutional investor survey, does he some Yahoo or does he know what he's talking about? At least as compared to uh, uh, what the experts think. Is it alone in its fears that earnings could disappoint investors the first half of the year? Mark, uh, no, I'm not even going to try his last name. Chief Investor Officer of UBS Global Wealth Management said in Monday 
that he believes there's an unfavorable risk reward trade off in the broad indexes like SP 500 at the moment. So he's not, so uh, guys, am I being a Debbie Downer? Um, well, I guess you could say that I'm being a Debbie Downer, but what am I really trying to say here? You need to what? Be all in or continue to hedge your bets with a 50 50. Uh, 60, 40, 40, 60, 30, 70, 70, 30. So that's all I'm trying to say. Let's be cautious about what's going on, okay? Let's see here. Now, with that said, uh, I want you to think, what <clears throat> is your job? Guys, what is your job? I'm going to get some answers to this. What is your job? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Trying to get some good answers here. Oh, every, every therapist. <laughs> so, is our job, guys? If you don't, if you give your clients a twenty percent rate of return next year, how will their how will their lives change? Hmm? How would their lives change? If you give them a double-digit rate of return next year, how would their lives change? Not much. That's right. Not much. If they go down another 30% this year, how would their lives change? Yeah, Larry. I mean, Larry said, if the market goes up, they'll just get thrilled, but their life doesn't change. That's, so that's the thing. See, you guys, as advisors, have the hardest job in the world. Can you make them happy? Can you make your clients happy with rates of return? Can you make them happy with rates of return? No, you can't. You know, because think about this. Uh, they just found out uh, that they have, knock on wood, but they, they have cancer, or they're just getting a divorce, or they just lost their, uh, you know, uh, their, their parents or whatever. But hey, I got a double digit rate of return, so I'm happy. Can you make them happy? No, they get excited. Don't get me wrong. They get excited about high rates of return, but does it, how long does it make them happy? They read their, they read their statements. They see they're up uh, 23%. And then how long does that happiness stay there? Or do they just go on with life? 15 minutes. That's right. I agree, Bert. They just 15 minutes. Yeah, until the dog barks. <laughs> exactly. And then they just go back with life. But if they open that statement and they're down 20%, they're down 30%, does that last 15 minutes? Or does that start to really weigh on them? Do they start to wonder whether we can stay for a full month down in Palm Springs? Do they start to wonder if they can uh, uh, go to, out to eat or buy that new car? See, you have the hardest, think about this, you have the hardest job in the world, which is you can never make them happy with, with how you manage your money, but can you make them unhappy? Can you make them unhappy? So what should we be concentrating on? Remember, we only work with retirees. So what should we be concentrating on? Rate of growth or making sure that they have the least downturn as possible? I'm not talking about a 20-year-old. I'm talking about what? People who are retired. If, if getting them a higher rate of return will not change their life, if getting a higher return will not make them happy, why should we spend any time trying to do that? What we want to make sure is what? We don't make them unhappy because that will change their life. That will make them unhappy with us. And yet, what are most advisors doing? What do most advisors do? They spend all their time trying to do what? Especially money managers. What are they doing? They're trying to grow the money. Grow, 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 grow. That's not your job with retirees. Okay? That's not your job. Now, how many of you remember that we're selling FIAs back in the late 90s, early 2000s? How many broker-dealers allowed FIAs back in the late 90s and 2000s? None. That's right. None, John. None of them did. They all said what? FIAs are the devil's spawn. You should never touch them. They're horrible. The fees are too high. <clears throat> you're, you're not going to grow your client's money. These things are terrible. How many BDs offer FIAs now? <clears throat> Why were they not offering FIAs? Why did they say FIAs were the devil's spawn back in the 90s and early 2000s? Because they weren't what? 
getting a cut. They weren't getting a cut. Now, how many BDs have their hands in the FIA pie? And now that their hands are in the FIA pie, FIA pie guess how many of them say, oh, yeah, now, now we like FIAs as long, you know, again, you can't go crazy with them, but we're fine with FIAs. And why are they saying that? Because they now get what? Paid. <laughs> Isn't that interesting, huh? So here's the thing, guys. If the market doubles, how that's going to affect your size or not? If it has, that's going to affect your client's lifestyle. Now, <clears throat> not only are BD, have BDs changed their tune in the last two decades to, hey, now that we get paid, we think FIAs are great. But other very stock and bond or equity-oriented entities have changed their mind as well. And I just want to share some of that, the, that um, outlook. So Barclays, so Barclays, is they, are they an insurance company or are they an equity company? Is our, uh, Barclays uh, a big insurance company or are they an equity company? Yeah, they're an equity company. So what do they say? FIA is compared to bonds. Innovation in the FIA space is markedly improved offering, which is to total BS. Because, guys, um, in the early 90s and 2000, late 90s and early 2000s, did we have FIAs that were doing very, very well? But, of course, they have to cover their tracks here and say, you know, no, now we're for FIAs because they've changed. Now, in the last two months, they have changed. We're going to have Matt talk about that a little bit from, uh, in, a, in a few minutes. But um, th these... <laughs> um, now, in the last two months, we've seen really good changes in FIAs, and they're, they're performing extremely well. But it's amazing how uh, how they uh, change their tune. We find that examples of this innovation in FIAs have outperformed bonds on a consistent basis for the last 25 years. So Barclays is an equity entity. Heck, they're even well known for their bond uh, uh, their their bond expertise, and they're saying what. The thing that I have expertise over has been outperformed by an insurance company product. Both FIAs and bonds are principal protected. However, bonds are exposed to yields, whereas FIAs have participated in a wide range of exposures other than yields. So guess what they're saying? FIAs have a better what? FIAs are a better hedge because they're exposed to a lot of different uh, uh, ways to go up besides just yields. Yields are near historical lows. Past bond performance has been driven partly by decreasing yields. Past bond performance might not be repeatable. Guys. Is, is the, are we going to see bonds, is it even possible for bonds to repeat uh, performance-wise as they have over the last 20 years? Is that even possible based on where interest rates are? Now, interest rates are near 500-year lows, 500-year lows, not 50-year lows, 500-year lows interest rates are. Now, they start to pop back up, but uh, – they're not, they're not anywhere near where they would need to be to see the kind of performance we saw with bonds over the last 20 years. FIAs offer flexible exposure to a diverse range of investments, including the latest equity, smart beta, dynamic multi-asset portfolios. So I'm not going to give you this um, report. Now, this port, report is available, and we'll show you where that is. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through the whole thing because that uh, would bore you guys to death. But I am going to just kind of go through uh, some of the uh, important uh, tables that they have here. So, again, what they're saying is S&P 500. Participation, uh, participation rate, S&P 500 cap, risk parity of 5% single, uh, single A bonds. Who um, uh, has performed the best? So average seven-year return, best seven-year return, worst seven-year return. So best average is 44 for the S&P 500 participation rate. S&P 500 with caps is 40. And single bonds was... 44.36. That's the average. Best is 7870, 78. Worst, 2318. Down here, again, we don't want to lose the client's money, 13%. So average rate of return, 5.33 with the SP 500 uh, uh, participation rate, 492 or 534. So how did SP 500 participation rates compare to single um, to bonds? And then, remember, this is not AAA bonds. This is single A bonds. If we looked at AAA bonds, this would be what? Better or worse? Worse. So, is this, how is this saying um, uh, FIAs perform as compared to bonds? Percent of time returns beat single A bonds, 45%, 40 So, uh, this is how, and that, this is during what, guys? 2004, uh, 2022. 
What were bonds doing from 2004 to 2022? <coughs> they were going what? Interest rates are falling, 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 and bonds are going up, up, up. So this is best case scenario, right? Best case scenario. So conclusion, innovation in FI space over the last 10 years has resulted in improved offerings that can access a diverse range of indices with intelligent techniques to maximize upside opportunities. Our analysis shows that a simple example of an equity bond risk parity index with 5% volatility target outperformed bonds 98% of the time over seven year period, 97 to 2022. Nine, outperformance bonds 98% of the time. We assess that fixed index annuities provide hypothesis with prepackaged bonds that are professionally managed by sophisticated insurance companies. Guys, is this how I present the FIA? Is this in the FIA presentation? Yes, because at the end, when do I <clears throat> mention the F that with the FIA participation rate um, sales presentation that I hope you guys all know, do we, when do we tell them it's an FIA at the very end? <clears throat> and then do I tell them they should buy um, an insurance-based product or did they tell me? They tell me, and it's simply asking them the question, would you want me to go buy your bonds or a professionally managed, sophisticated company to buy your bonds? you want me to buy your bonds where I'm buying maybe uh, uh, $300,000 worth or somebody who's buying $3 billion worth? Who's going to be better? <clears throat> who's going to have the better price? Who's going to be more expert? The companies are. So that th this is actually used in our uh, FIA presentation. The fact that just like Barclay says, FIAs are professionally managed, uh, uh, sophisticated uh, entities that are uh, giving your client packaged bonds and options. Combined with the upside link to the equity markets, they are less exposed to inflation than bonds. <clears throat> so, Barclays, equity oriented, bond experts, and they're saying what? Buy bonds or buy FIAs? <clears throat> buy FIAs. Then we look at Ibbotson. Ibbotson, is Ibbotson known for uh, being a big insurance proponent or is he all about stocks? The Ibbotson charts, the Ibbotson. What's he known for? Stock, 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 stock. And he says, big index nudies beat out bonds. And again, not the whole report, but in a nutshell, he's looking here at large cap stocks, long-term government bonds, FIA. Well, caps always outperform, right? So look at FIAs compared to government bonds. Because remember, previously in that Barclays, they were looking at single A bonds, Government bonds are AAA bonds. So now, FIAs, how much do FIAs beat out government bonds? Handily. By 10%, right? So large cap stocks, of course, that's you know, going to be the best. Government bonds, AAA bonds, are going to be the last, and FIAs are uh, are the in-betweeners, as we say. So standard deviation, look at the standard deviation between uh, uh, large cap stocks, though, and FIA. Minimum annual return. Negative 27. This is a minimized three-year return. Negative 27. Negative two. And guys, what's happened to this number? Because this is a little bit older uh, report. This is a few years old. So what's happened to this return? This minimum annualized three-year return, what's going to happen to this when they include what happened to bonds in the last year? That's going to get hammered. And of course, an FI, you can't have. The worst you can do with an FI is what? Zero. You may look at maximum. 30, 23, 27. So where do you want a client to want to be? In bonds or in FIA? And see, this is a, uh, let's see here. Below and above median bond average return environment. So this is below a median bond return environment. Guys, are we in above bond environment or a below bond uh, uh, environment right now? Bonds should outperform how bonds normally perform or underperform how bonds normally perform without in a high inflation environment which one are we looking at they should perform worse than the, on the average or better than it yes under that's how we're under that's how we're at in the environment we're right now so long-term bonds 1.87 large cap stocks 11.43 fias 4.42 how much better than bonds do fias perform so when you look at a 60-40 stocks bonds, it would be an average of 7.6% rate of return. 60-20-20, which is stocks, bonds, and FIA is 8.12. Or 60-40 stocks and FIA, look at, so what is, what is the best rate of return? What's the best rate of return? 
stocks and FIA, just like we've been preaching. 40, 60, 60, 40, 50, 50. Stocks and FIA, that's your best portfolio. Again, by Ibison. Then we have Allianz uh, Bernstein, fixed index annuity. So Allianz, oh, I'm sorry, Allianz. Oh, that's a little uh, uh, Freudian stuff, right? Alliance Bernstein, are they um, insurance companies or are they equity, equity, equity? Insurance companies are equity, equity, equity. Yeah, they're, they're a stock entity. They're a wealth management equity they're not, uh, uh, entity. They're not an insurance company. But yet, what do they say about fixed index annuities? Let's take a look. In a nutshell, U.S. large cap. Uh, uh, so returns are likely to be much lower ahead. So this is what they're saying. This is, <clears throat> they start out with not talking about FIs at all, but what we should expect from equities and bonds. So what are they saying we should expect going ahead? Stocks should be averaging uh, somewhere between 7.4 and 6.2. What are they saying bonds will be averaging? 2.8 to 2.6. Do you think FIA can beat out 2.8 to 2.6 going forward? This is 20-year forecast. So the next 20 years, they're saying stocks should average 7.4 to 6, uh, 6.2, 2.8 to 2.6. So let's just talk about, well, first of all, can FIAs make a 7% rate of return, 6% rate of return? They absolutely can, especially when you eliminate the down year. But we're not replacing equities with uh, FIAs. We're replacing bonds. And again, this is corporate bonds. So this is giving you a better rate of return than a government bond. Can FIAs outperform bonds here going over the next 20 years? You're darn tooting again. So accumulation, the fixed index annuity drives better savings. First evaluation we'll make is the accumulation phase, testing to better understand whether the fixed index annuity allocation can do a better job of building wealth. Specifically, we're looking to answer four questions about FI enhanced portfolio. Is it more likely to accumulate more assets than the traditional 60, 40 stocks and bonds? When it wins, is the margin bigger than the losing margin when it falls short of 60% stocks, 4% bonds. Does it fare better in the extremes? The 90th percentile, so doing really, really well, or the 10th uh, percentile doing really, really poorly? Does it look more or less attractive versus the 60, 40 stock bond if rates stay ultra low for a long time? So actually these questions, we developed a retirement planning software tool, Journey Guide, blah, blah, blah. And they ran thousands and thousands and thousands. So the FI portfolio is right here. Fixed index improved savings outcomes. What percentage of times did the FIA, instead of bonds, using FI instead of bonds, outperform a stock and bond portfolio? A little or a lot, guys? A little or a lot? And when it outperformed, it outperformed almost double when the 60-40 when the, the portfolio uh, was better. So if, it's, if you got a three-quarter, if, if it's three times as likely, if an FIA stock portfolio is three times as likely to outperform, and when it outperforms, it doubles that rate of return as compared to the, the stock bond. Is it even a, do you even have to, how much should you even have to think about whether you want bonds in your portfolio as compared to FIA? Guys, if you showed this to a client or a prospect where their advisor had them in stocks and bonds, how many people are going to move? Even, even if they do not uh, understand statistics, even if they don't understand math, can they see that 72 is bigger than 28? Can they see that four is bigger than two? How many of them will move? And remember, this is, this is an entity that's stock and bond oriented. This is not an insurance company. Can you get a better third party endorsement then somebody who is not even in the industry is talking smack about their industry. This is this is a this is a somebody outside the insurance industry who's saying don't use our product, use the insurance industry instead. Guys, can you get a better third party than that? That's crazy. That's crazy. Frequency of FIA enhanced outperformance. <clears throat> it's a bond yield. So it's just going through again in more detail of what we just looked at previously. If I enhance performance with income rider enhances, and if you do an income rider, look at how often an FIA beats the, 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 then it goes from 72% to what? 
if you have an income rider, then what happens to the chance of an FIA beating a 60-40 stock bond portfolio? It's virtually what? It's almost what? It's almost 100%, right? Now, show this to a client. How many clients are going to say, yeah, I want an FIA with an enhanced, <laughs> uh, with a uh, um, benefit rider? Guys, these reports are, if you get in front of a prospect, their, their advisor is going to look like what? Again, you can't get a better third party than when a third party is saying this other thing is better than what we have. It's like, guys, how often do you go into a Ford dealership where they're saying, <clears throat> or go into a Chevy dealership and say, don't buy us. Don't buy my Chevy pickup. Go buy the Ford F-150. Does that ever happen? Do you understand this is what's happening here? You're walking into a Chevy dealership, Alliance Bernstein, Ibbotson, Barclays, and they're saying what? Sure, we have some good cars, but for what you're looking for, for that guaranteed money, don't buy a Chevy, buy a Ford F-150. How often does that happen? Do you see how powerful these third parties are? And they're saying, they're saying right here, look at, this is 98.6% of the time, you're going to be much better off with that Ford F-150 than with my Chevy pickup. So guys, yes, yeah, we're going to get a question. Are these, uh, or, or um, let's see here. So, um, so um, where are these available, Missy? Can you jump in there? Yes, I, sh I sure can. You guys hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so we have them available a couple of different places. I'll always post them here with the call, so you can always find them on the call replay. Um, but they also have some permanent homes that these articles will be at as well. How hard People would it be for you to change the screen to yourself so that we can... Um... Oh, yeah. No, I can do that. Hold on one second here. Yeah. <clears throat> Just give me a second here. But can guys. I get a bunch of yays or nays, guys, while she's doing this? Are these three reports powerful? I want everybody to answer. Yay or nay? Do these, do these basically tell you that if you have bonds right now, you're an idiot? Yeah, now I can see, Missy. Okay. You guys can see this okay then? Okay. Perfect. So um, I will always post them with the call. So on the call replay page, you'll be able to look for today's call once it um, shows up and I'll have the articles on there as well. Um, but where they'll permanently live, uh, a couple of different places. If you go underneath the meeting process, implementation meeting, I'll post them here underneath the fixed index um, selling presentation just as protect your assets from losses, a uh, great third-party endorsement that validates FIAs are, are a good tool. So this is our, kind of our permanent page that they'll be living on. So protect your assets from losses. And that'll losses. be all three articles? That is all three articles. Yep, when we go there, um, that page is also, uh, yeah, so it's got all three articles here. So there's the Ibbotson one, there's the Barclays one, and there's the Alliance Bernstein one. And that page is also available. I know some people like to find it instead underneath the low cost marketing, um, which works just fine as well. You just scroll all the way down here to the bottom and pick it up from the protect your assets um, section of the low cost marketing. So it goes again to the same page. Type, what would they type into search to find that? Did, would there yep. be a word they could type into search to find that? Yep, so you could for sure type in like um, Ibbotson and uh, there you go, you've got protect your assets from losses, and it's gonna pop up here underneath Ibbotson. Or Barclays or Alliance Bernstein, and it would just pop yep. to that same page. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's all you have to do. And then Matt also has access to all these as well. And guys, here's the thing. these All three of these reports <clears throat> were written before we had the kind of rates that we have right now with FIA. So with the rates we have right now with FIA, these things would be off the chart. So these um, reports are actually conservative on how FIs should perform as, as uh, opposed to being aggressive in how they think FIs should perform. So if, it, if these reports say FIs are good from a, a year, two years, three years ago, they would be off the charts right now. Make sense? So anything to jump in and add, Matt, or do you have these reports available, right? So you're, you'd be happy to get it if they 
can come through the website to get them or they can contact you to get them or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I've got these uh, available as well. So feel free, anybody that wants to get their hands on this that doesn't have um, the website up in front of them, give me a call or shoot me an email. I can get them out to you right away. And um, like Mike was saying, a lot of the rates have been um, actually increasing since these reports were ran. So um, if you've got a client or if you just want to see what a report would look like now with the current rate environment, I'd be more than happy to run those numbers for you. Um, like just for an example on the um, fixed index annuity side on the S&P 500 caps, we're seeing north of 11 to 15 percent cap rates with 100 percent participation. So those numbers are going to just be incredibly impressive compared to what these articles are even showing. So uh, feel free to give me a call. Um, I'd be happy to run through those with you, um, depending on carrier um, ratings and the term of the contracts. I can kind of go through it, and let you know which ones are the best of, of each scenario. Um, and then I know uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about that trigger index as well. That's another incredibly impressive story, especially to, to compare to these uh, bond, bond portfolios right now. So it's a great time right now. It's a perfect storm for for our industry, for people to be moving over to the fixed index annuity side. So um, yeah, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email whenever whenever you have questions. Thanks, Matt. So guys, I mean, even if you approach your client and made the point that I just made there, it'd be like going to a Chevy dealership and then saying a Ford F-150 is a better deal. That's what these reports are saying. That's what these reports are saying. So, and am I saying you should put all of your money into an FIA? No, I'm saying you should have what? Hedge your bets with the market. And right now, should you be hedging your bets more conservative or more aggressive right now? With the way things are. Conservative. So don't take all your money out of stocks. But remember, and again, I love Mike Kitsis, I love Wade Foe, and, and how much do they say you should have at the beginning of a 20 or 30 year retirement, how much should you have in stock? I mean, it's the complete opposite of what we've been trading. We were always told uh, to say um, age, uh, 100 minus your age to tell you how much should you have in stocks, how much should you have in bonds. Is that the way they look at it or do they look at it the complete opposite? They think you should start off with very few, you know, like a, a 20 or 30% in stocks at the beginning of retirement and then every year you become more aggressive. And did they do the math on this? Did they do the research on this? Did they just uh, use a rule of thumb? Hey, 100 minus your age? Or did they actually go to the research and find out what actually is the best uh, do dollars and cents wise, uh, mathematically, uh, analysis wise? They did the work. Start out conservative, then go more aggressive as you get older. That's what they say. So guys, please, I, I hope we made the case yet again don't, you know, I'm not saying stocks are evil. I have tons of money in stocks, but I have tons of money in FIAs too. Hedge your bets. And remember, you have a job that can never make a client happy. You can only make them unhappy. And FIAs are a great tool to make them what? Sadder or happier? Happier. So, John, you said, do I have the article? What do you mean? Which article are you talking about? So the Missy West where you get these three articles. So are you talking about these three articles we covered today or which article are you talking about, John? Okay, cool. He's, oh, it's a different John, John. <laughs> so yeah. We, uh, okay. Well, those are the three articles right there. If you're wondering about the Kitsis article, that's in the FIA presentation, the bond presentation. So you go here, Miss you going there. It's in the bond presentation. Sorry, I just got to move my screen over. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I see that. Yep. There you uh -huh. go. Okay. So it's um, the bond one, which is right here. Yeah. And that goes through um, what uh, Kit just discovered. So does that make sense? So I'm going to let you guys have an early call if you let me have an early call so I can get back to. My vacation. Oh, you may, wait, wait, Missy's going to show you where it is. Okay, just a second. So here's the kit this. Oh, right there. Right, oh, there we go. Right there. And you can see at the bottom, there's the reach. If you're looking for this article, it's right there at the bottom, and it'll take you right to the source. But again, we're looking at where should you be, 
30% is the sweet spot, 30% in equities and 7% in FIA. Because <laughs> he's saying bonds, but we just saw that what? FIA performed better than bonds. So what would happen? And that's a good point. What would happen to these numbers then? Because Kisses used stocks and bonds. What would happen to these numbers if he'd used stocks and FIAs instead of stocks and bonds? They'd be even what? Higher. Better, that's right. Super. All right. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for being on today, guys. I'm going to get back to my vacation. You get back to work, and we'll talk to you all next Monday. Thanks, everybody.